Hi everyone, my name is Nobu coming to you again for this week's political commentary. And I want to talk about today, I want to highlight something that I think that has perturbed millions of Nigerians. But I want to come at it from the direction of not just to complain, not just to criticize, not just to mention what, in all honesty, all of us already know what is wrong with Nigeria. So, this week, the, the price of petroleum increased again to almost 600 naira in most places. This week alone, the exchange rate has gone up from, it used to be 1,000 naira to 1 pound, now it's around 1,093 naira. Is going up to 1,100 naira to one pound. Inflation obviously has been high for years already, and so many other things going on wrong in Nigeria. But what I want to talk about now is the question of what are you and I going to do about it? I think that's what matters. I think that's the issue or the crux of the matter. The crux of the matter is what will you and I do? to resolve this puzzle called Nigeria. It's all well and good for us to come out here and, and, and call out all the challenges we have. Insecurity. Boko Haram is still running rampant. Kidnapping is still happening. The Southeast is still on fire. And so forth and so on. Price of petroleum is, is going up. And I don't want to give you false hope, but it's not going to change anytime soon. I think you already know that anyway. It's not going to change anytime soon. And so the only thing that we can do is ask ourselves, what are we going to do about it? Is the reason why I began Nobu Nigeria to talk about issues like this and also to highlight the solutions to these problems. And so for me as a Nigerian, for me as Onyibo, as someone that wants to see Nigeria develop and change, I'm always asking myself, how will I play a part how will I be involved in making sure that Nigeria changes and becomes great? And the, there are many ways we can get involved. However, one of the things that we need to see in Nigeria, first and foremost, is the government must start spending on infrastructure. That is what the government has to start doing. The government must start spending on building world-class roads for us, world-class hospitals. The government has to at the state level as well, at the federal level, has to resolve this electricity issue so that we can now have 24-7 electricity in Nigeria. I believe that if we have 24-7 electricity, if we have excellent roads, if we have excellent infrastructure, Nigeria will become great. That is a step to forward. That is a step towards greatness for Nigeria. And so that is what I believe that we should be doing as a country. We should have state police in Nigeria. We must have state police. The simple way to solve insecurity, the simple way, very simple way to solve insecurity is give the states the power to have their own police. Just like the Americans do. This one-size-fits-all approach to solving almost every issue in Nigeria is no longer working. Thank God the federal government has devolved the problem of electricity to the states and to individuals. So nobody has the 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 power now to generate electricity in, in the federal government. The states can do that. You and I can do it. Anybody literally can do it. Before it used to be just the federal government, but now anyone can generate power supply for them for themselves, which is a good thing. And so we need to deploy the same tactic again when it comes to state policing. We can't have the IG of police send a noter now, someone that doesn't, that, that, that doesn't speak Igbo, who may not also speak Yoruba, and send him to Yoruba state or an Igbo state. It makes no sense. And likewise, you can't send an Igbo man to the north to be the CP of Kasena or Nasarawa. That's foolishness. That's wrong. The, oh, just like sending me, for example, and I'm from Anambra state. I grew up in Anambra state. I do not know how things work in Kasuna State. I just don't know. No matter how I want to go and live there and be the CP of police for Kasuna State, I would never know how things work in Kasuna State. But guess who knows? The person who has lived and experienced life in Kasuna State. 
So it only makes sense for the governor of the state, if we have state police, to appoint someone in Kassina State to solve insecurity in Kassina State. The same applies in Anambra State. The same applies in Imo State. But when you have the IGP in Abuja, send people who don't even know the culture, they don't know the language, they don't know, they don't know the power tussles between families in each state. Because guess what? Every state has their own power centers. People who have influence. People who make things happen. I do not know what those power centers are in, for example, Jigawa State or in Lagos. But guess who knows? People who have lived and dwelt in those places, they know the power centers in each and every state. Or in their respective states, sorry. And so they know how best to solve insecurity. And so till we begin to see a change in the fundamental in these fundamental things, they will begin to see a change in the tectonic plates in Nigeria. These things that undergird our country. This, they will begin to see an, institu an institutional change in Nigeria. Nigeria will not change. And so, as a realist, as someone who sees things for what they are, we have to call out Nigeria for what Nigeria is. Nigeria is an immature state. Nigeria is at the shared level. Nigeria is still at the level of circling. Nigeria never even reached the level of Okay, now we can determine our what we want for ourselves. So at this primal stage that we are now, the best way to resolve Nigeria quickly is by one, spend on infrastructure. Two, give us state police to solve insecurity. We must have state police. Three, state governors, find a way to go into public private partnerships and start building your own electricity. Start, start building out your own electric infrastructure in your states and in your regions. We must start doing that. Four, governors, the presidents, start building world-class hospitals. According to data a few years ago, from what I remember, Nigeria loses $1 billion to medical tourism. That's $1 billion that can be spent back home in Nigeria. That's, that's, that's a lot of money that we, are, that we are losing to foreign countries. Talk about people going abroad for studies as well, myself included. All this money should have been spent back home in Nigeria to develop Nigeria. You know, so I don't, I don't want to come here and rant and rave about our problems as a country. I want to rather rant and rave about how do we solve it. What can you and I do? And what you and I can do is Come next elections, we have to go again. We just have to go again. The honest truth is, no matter how we want to look at this thing, right? Not everyone can leave Nigeria. Not everyone has the money to Japan. No, not everyone. Just that, that just that just the honest God's God's truth. And so, the best best that we have is to develop our country. And the honest truth is, even those living abroad, I mean, call your uncle or your aunt or your friend living abroad and speak to them. They will tell you how hard abroad is. Whether you're in the UK or America or any place you are outside Nigeria, just like those living in Nigeria, yes, the degrees to which we suffer are different. Of course they are. But even abroad, people still suffer. We still, all of us, we all suffer. We all have this idea of abroad being Eldorado, but that's just not the case. But at least back home, at least if we had a great country, no one would want to leave Nigeria for anywhere in the world. We don't want to be here when it's always where it's always cold, four o'clock in the in the evening. It gets dark in winter. It, it, light comes around eight a.m. in the morning, or some, or even some cases nine o'clock in the morning. No one wants to, no one wants to live that kind of life. And so the best bet that we have is to develop our country for ourselves. And so for me, I've listed out many other some things, and I hope I know you also know other things that we can do to solve Nigeria. But I believe that if we can attack these fundamentals, if we can allow people at the local level to determine what is best for them, for them, this is how the Americans do it. In a country so heterogeneous like Nigeria, in a country where you have 250 ethnic groups, in a country where we are so divided along ethnic tribal lines, the best thing to do is to allow those people at those small local levels to determine what is best for themselves. That is the only thing that you can do. 
That is the best thing to do. Allow them to determine what is best for them. Don't try to interfere. Don't try to do one size fits all for everybody. It is, it is just not going to work. As people say, if you, if you keep doing the same thing all, all over and all over again, you keep getting the same results. And so we need to try a different tactic. We need to try a different, a different something now. And that different something is to find a way to change Nigeria's institutions. To find a way to spend and to spend massively. If you think that we're going to save our way out of, out of the mess we are in, I'm sorry to say this, but you're wrong. The only way we can get ourselves out of, out of this mess is by spending and spending massively. That is the way Amer the Americans did it back in the day. I think it was FDR. I might be wrong. Who did the interstate uh, more? Interstate highways. And those interstate highways made America what America is today. So what that means is that you can drive from Washington, D.C., get on the on the express or the motorway, whatever they call it in America, and it could be wherever, wherever you want to be in a couple of hours or minutes. In Nigeria, it's not the case. Bad roads everywhere. So we must spend massively on infrastructure, power infrastructure, human infrastructure, lights infrastructure, security infrastructure. All these things needs, this needs money. Don't get me wrong, we're not gonna, nobody should spend on frivolities like having 20, 20 cars in your convoy or, or flying abroad from it. No, but we have to spend on the things that matter. So guys, let me know what you think. Am I making sense? Am I, am I speaking some, making some points? If you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like, and don't forget to share it with your friends. Thank you for watching and God bless. Thank you.